So what is happening behind the scenes after you buy your house? Well, the home is gonna get taken off the market and real estate websites will list your home as recently sold. This data is automatically gathered through internet search algorithms and then your address is sold to other companies. Now it's open season on your home and your money. What's up guys, it's Sean, your Charleston Realtor. Today I wanna to warn you about some of the tricky tactics that salesmen will do to new homeowners. I've experienced all of this firsthand, so this video can help you know what to expect when you buy your first home. Before we get to the list, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. It helps me out a ton. So number one, don't fall for the home security salesman who will start pestering you almost immediately after you close on your house. I remember I was unloading my couch into my first home when ADT rolled up and started pitching me their service. There's break-ins all over the place. Look at this video of a burglar opening a back door. You might save a few bucks on your homeowner's insurance. Over the next few days, ADT came back and so did Vector, CPI, and another home security company that I forget the name. These salespeople get paid a commission based on the contract that they sell to you. And oh boy, those contracts are a doozy. They're going to flash a low payment, like 50 or $60 a month, and offer free installation of their devices. However, one small teensy weensy detail they'll gloss over is that you're going to get locked into a super long contract on the order of a year. You can't cancel this contract, and it may even auto-renew if you forget about it years later. So full disclosure, I was a sucker. I fell for the product ADT was offering, and I bought a plan. I got locked into a 36 month contract for $60 a month that I literally cannot cancel. After six months of having my door camera, it stopped working. And a year later, my backyard camera stopped working. ADT was gonna charge me for someone to come out and fix it since you really can't troubleshoot their equipment yourself. And oh, by the way, when I moved out of that home two years later, ADT still wouldn't let me cancel the contract. So some people might feel comfortable with a home security system, but the reality is after the new home feeling stops, and the new home feeling is a thing, by the way. Ask yourself though, am I really going to use this? Is it worth the thousands of dollars over a couple of years? For me, that answer was no. And for so many other people, the answer is no. There are cheaper alternatives to those antiquated security companies. Uh, Ring and Simply Safe come to mind. But if you are dead set on getting a home security system through one of those monthly contract services, then I recommend you ask the salesperson these questions. What is the length of the contract? What is the penalty for canceling the contract? What is the cost of installation? What do you charge when the equipment breaks? And what do I do when I move before the contract is over? The answers to these questions will help you make a more informed decision than I did. Oh, and a side note, if your realtor ever recommends a particular home security company to you, it's probably because they're getting a kickback. When I have a buyer close on a house, like clockwork, I get a phone call a couple days later from a security company saying, they'll give me $200 if I refer them to my buyer. Like, no. I think that's unethical and I would never recommend such a product to my buyers. So the second thing you'll try to be sold on is pest control services. Just like home security companies, a swarm of sales representatives will begin to start marketing their pest services to you, like as soon as you close on your home. And just like those home security companies, they'll make you agree to a lengthy contract with either monthly or quarterly treatments. I haven't seen a yearly plan that was less than $400 and most are typically pricier than that depending on the number of treatments. These companies will send out a technician on a day of their choosing to treat both the exterior and the interior of home with questionable results. To be completely honest, I paid for a year of this service and there wasn't a noticeable downtick of insects in my yard or in my home. I personally let this contract lapse and after a year and started treating the home myself with DIY pesticides found at hardware stores for a fraction of the price. This isn't to say that pest control services aren't for everyone. You might find value or comfort knowing that a professional is coming out to your home every so often. You might not have the time to put your own chemicals around the house, or you might value your time more than that. My experiences are not your experiences. Just understand that you're not just paying for pesticide, you're also paying for their labor, their overhead, and their profit. It's a business, you're the customer, and everyone gets a piece. By the way, and I have to say this, my hesitation about getting locked into lengthy contracts with pest control services does not extend to a termite bond. In my opinion, termite repair bonds are 100% necessary to protect your home in South Carolina. Now lastly, you won't get salesmen knocking on your door for this one, but watch out for direct mailers from mortgage companies soliciting your business to refinance a home. A week or so after you close, you'll start getting obnoxious mailers from all across the country. These mailers look incredibly official. They'll state the property address, the county you're located in, the mortgage company that originated your loan, and other really specific information. To grab your attention, they'll come in various shapes, envelopes, and colors. 
don't fall for it. First, you typically can't refinance your mortgage within the first six months of closing due to lending laws, and usually it doesn't make much sense to refinance anyway. There is a substantial cost to refinance your mortgage. I personally will only refinance my homes for one of two reasons. For one, I might want to lower the interest rate if I'm planning to keep the home longer than the break-even point. For instance, if I can lower my interest rate to say like $100 a month, but to do so would cost me $2,400 in fees, then my expected break-even point would be two years from now. On the other hand, I might refinance to pull equity out of the home, but I would consider only doing that if I was going to redeploy that money by purchasing another cash flowing asset. Also, consider that these direct mailers are from companies that will typically have higher origination fees and other charges than your traditional lender or mortgage broker. They have to pay for significant overhead and marketing expenses, so they're typically going to charge you more. Don't be fooled by the teaser interest rates or the equity they claim that you have in a particular home. It's all marketing designed to get you to call the number. And say you do want to refinance in six months or a year, you're best off calling a loan officer that you trust not some random letter. So that's the three things to watch out for when you buy your first home. As always, if you want to chat, my contact information is in the description below. I'll see you in the next video.